participation helps people to learn. One of the most complete and deepened work explaining what is participation within museums is the book The Participatory Museum by Nina Simon. It is a guide to make cultural institutions more dynamic, relevant, essential places, to use the same words of the author. The first step to face is the distinction between a traditional and the participatory design for an exhibition or an entire museum. Indeed, the choice of the approach by the museum staff influences the way in which the information flows between the institution and the users. The visitor participation can move from passive to active, in other words, from a lacking of intervention in the artistic performance to a key role in it. What do we mean precisely with immersive experience? There are different definitions of immersion given by several authors. Generally speaking, immersion is a state characterized by a deep involvement in the here and now, even causing a lack of time awareness and loss of self-consciousness. The individual is completely absorbed by what is happening. Anne Hansen and Lina Mosberg, in their paper Consumer Immersion, a Key to Extraordinary Experiences, define immersion as a form of special temporal belonging in the world that is characterized by deep involvement in the present moment. This can be applied also to museum experience, when the visitor can be more or less active and emotionally involved. In this case, the immersion can be immediate or progressive, depending on the degree of competence of the visitor. If he does not have knowledge about the topic, the immersion would be generally more gradual. In participatory projects, the institutions should be considered as participatory platforms connecting customers who acquire the role of creators of content, consumers, critics, and so on. In this way, it is created a visitor co-produced experience. Not all the visitors appreciate participatory experiences as a considerable slice of the public prefers a static exhibition. There are different types of audience in relation to participation, from people actively creating contents to people only reviewing these contents, from spectators to people not participating in any way. As the active producers of contents are only a low percentage, the museum staff should not focus mainly on them, but rather create differentiated participatory experiences for a differentiated audience. A participatory exhibition has a multitude of outcomes. To supply an educational experience and to increase some learning skills. To foster the role of the institution as a social place to attract new visitors via marketing campaigns, to create outputs for other visitors. A good strategy for making visitors as more participative as possible could be that of exhibiting objects with a more developed social value. There are some designing techniques, suggested by Nina Simon and others, which can help transforming artifacts into so-called social objects. To ask questions to visitors, to provide live interpretations, to present some objects in a provocative way, to provide people with clear instructions about how to engage reciprocally, to give the opportunity of sharing objects. In addition to the social objects, there are other participatory techniques and strategies that museums can adopt. For example, visitors may be encouraged to leave messages or report for other visitors. They can take notes during the visit and bookmark specific objects or they can do some practical activities along the tour, receiving instructions from a supervisor. In this way, visitors actively experience the museum and acquire knowledge on collections or specific objects. Now let's present a couple of good examples of participatory projects. The first one is the marketing campaign launched in 2007 called I Like Museums. 82 museums in Northeast England created an online directory encouraging visitors to explore museums in line with their interests and not with institutional content. Indeed, keywords to search museums of interests can be military history or big stuff or having fun, for example. This is a real audience-centered approach as the visitor chooses what he would like to see and to experience that day. In this way, people can perceive museums as suitable for different interests and learning needs. Another good example of participatory project was made by the British Museum. 
In 2014, it launched a program called Museum of the Future, in which visitors were asked to participate to a public debate concerning future developments of the museum. People were called to discuss about the possible changes related to the building, the displays and the services. The purpose was to improve the visitors' experience by asking them directly what they want from the museum itself. Let's resume. Participation and interaction help to facilitate the memorization and the learning. Therefore, the engagement of the audience is a matter of paramount importance. However, people do not go through an exhibition in the same way. Indeed, the visit experience is usually personal because each person tends to focus on what he likes and on what he prefers to learn.